And welcome again to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. This is my initial reaction show to Foam's 1-1 draw against Wolves at Craven Cottage. Let's just say it was a disappointing first half for Foam, but they found a way to get a point out of this. Fantastic goal in the second half, and I'm just going to share my initial reaction. If you're watching live, please feel free to share your comments, and I could share them during this Quick initial reaction show. We will have a full post-match show Saturday night. So Saturday night, I'm going to have co-hosts or potentially a few co-hosts to do a post-match show. But I wanted to do a quick show now just to share my initial reaction on this 1-1 draw. And if you would have asked me at halftime if I would have taken a point, I would have basically, and I've seen this comment, bitten your hand off because Fulham were very poor in the first half, but they were poor because Wolves were the superior team, especially in the first half. I wouldn't say overall in the first half, they were the better side. Second half, I thought Fulham were the better side. I will just limit that they were the superior side in the first half by a country mile. If they were a much better, they were more fluid, Fulham, throughout the match, had a hard time putting it together. And that's a credit to Wolves, to their coaching staff, to the way that this team played. Their passing was very good. They didn't have much end product. And in the end, that's what probably did them in. Fulham did have some end product, and that's what got them the draw. And also, I think what got them the draw was they're playing the second half, the substitutions, Their overall desire in the second half, I thought Fulham were more likely to score to win this match. So for me, Fulham deserve a point. I know that's crazy to say if you watch the first half, but I thought they did enough to get a point. Did they do enough to win the match? No. That's just my thoughts on that. Very disappointing first half, but that's down to Wolves. Sometimes you just have to give credit to the other side and say, that was about Wolves. That was about the way they played. They did not let Fulham play. Fulham were at home, and they made Fulham look that way, which definitely was not good. Overall, not the best performance. We keep saying that. But what's interesting about this, and I just watched the post-match reaction on NBC Sports, and Robbie Earl said something very interesting, and I'm going to share this with everyone because I agree with this take coming out of the match. A couple years ago, When Fulham were in the Premier League, Fulham lose this match. Fulham absolutely lose this match, not this side. And that comes down to the players, the coaching staff, and everyone. It's a different Fulham side. It's a grittier Fulham team. They found a way to get a point. Wasn't pretty, but the quality of Manor Salmon was the difference to get the point. But overall, they played much better in the second half. So I think that they deserve the point. I don't think they deserve all three. Okay. As always, if you're watching live or listening, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other film supporters find us. I have a good amount of people watching live with me. I'm just going to share a couple of comments that I'm getting. This is from my friend Chris Goodwin, who happens to be a Liverpool supporter. Not a great first half, but a good response in the second half to get a draw. Great goal from Manor Solomon. And that's actually the correct pronunciation. It's Manor Solomon, not Manor Solomon. Just want to just share that with everyone in case you are interested. That's the way it's supposed to be pronounced. David Nicholson. Evening, Russ. Let's take a point from that. Second best for a lot of it. Wolves, great pressing for much of the game. But we were quite incisive too. Just a bit wasteful in the first ball. And Solomon, a difference maker for sure. Absolutely. Lars Anderson chimes in. Lamina was good, yeah. Chris Goodwin also shares that. I was thinking that as well. Robbie Earl and I are, are on the same wavelength. Yeah, Robbie Earl said, last time the Premier League full lose this match. So that is definitely an improvement. Absolutely an improvement. So if I quickly look at the first half, and let's just call it what it is, it was a dominant performance from Wolverhampton Wanderers. And full were having a hard time getting any kind of control of this match. And their goal in the first half was warranted. Dare I say maybe they should have scored more than one. I thought Fulham were fortunate 
to get out of the half only down by a goal. They had created some very good opportunities, and they deserve that goal. They deserve the first goal, their only goal of the match. But if you look at the first half and you look at this Fulham side, and like I said, I think that in years past, they might have been down 2-3-0 at the half, but not this Fulham team. They did enough to get to the half to allow Marco and his coach and staff to look at what happened in the first half, make adjustments, which I believe they did, and let you see an improved second half from Fulham Football Club. We definitely saw that. So, But the first half was all about Wolves. The second half, they were still good, but it had more to do with Fulham. So as I look to the second half, I think we have to start off with the substitutions, bringing on Sasa Lukic for Harrison Reed and also bringing on Manor Solomon. I thought he was a difference maker coming on for Bobby Deckard over Reed. And the minute you would saw him with the ball, he felt different. He felt like he was going to do something. He obviously did. But it wasn't just about him. It was just a different feel to that second half. But I think both substitutions made a difference. Harrison Reed, I think, really was dealing with that knock in the first half. I think that had something to do with it, but I liked the fact that Marco made this double substitution to begin the second half because I do think that that changed the complexity of the second half to start the second half bringing on these two players. So for me, kudos to Marco for not waiting, say, in the 60th minute to make these subs at the half because there was an opportunity to potentially win this match. And I think it was imperative to make a change at the half. Marco does it. It paid off. It absolutely paid off. So let me uh, look at some more comments. Let's see what else we have here. So this is from Billy C. Happy to be honest with a point, a very tough match around the corner with Brentford, Arsenal, Liverpool. I was thinking the same thing. So, I'll take a point all day long, Billy C. If you saw the first half, absolutely. Totally agree with that. My friend Chris Goodwin says, Mitro was a big miss. How long is he out for? Chris, I'm not sure. It's a hamstring injury, so we're going to have to see. We'll see. I don't expect him to be involved in the Leeds United match. I hope that he is back involved soon. Let's see. This is from my friend Dave Nicholson. I actually quite liked that I didn't notice Lukic a lot as an individual, but clearly he did a job. Totally agree. Let's see. Let's see what else we got. This is from Isaac. Anyway, now we go to Brentford without Polina, Mitrovic, Kearney, and possibly Reed. Let's hope they have an off day. Well, we'll see. I was thinking the same thing. I'm fortunate because I do want to mention this, something we have to talk about in the first half. And you knew this was coming, the yellow card for Paulina. How difficult is this going to be for Fulham? I think it's going to hurt. I think it's really going to hurt. So I was thinking right after he got his yellow card, Fulham need to get something from this match. Dare I say win the match because the matches coming up are going to be harder. So I think this was an important point for Fulham Football Club. With Brentford and Arsenal on the horizon and like someone also mentioned Liverpool. This was an important point. I will say that right now. So when we look at the second half, let's go right to the goal. This is three goals in three games for Manor Solomon. And there's a Goldman if you're watching to make it 1-1. And what's interesting about this, I wouldn't say this came out of nowhere, but Fulham were not fluid in this match. This was an individual Moment of brilliance. Let's just call it what it is from Menorah Solomon. But the team around them, they were still fighting, and they fought all the way to the end. And in my opinion, they were the better team in the second half. I thought as the match went on the second half, I thought, to be honest with you, that Wolves were fading. I thought Fulham had better fitness than them. I thought they were creating more of the chances to score. They looked more dangerous to score. So for me, Fulham definitely deserved a point here. And they actually had an opportunity at the very end of the match to get all three with a header from Carlos Vinicius. Now, 
you could call it that this was, I wouldn't call it a, an easy save, but if he had a little bit more power behind it, maybe he makes uh, Saw work a little bit harder. But in the end, like I said, I was just thinking watching the match. I'll take a point. I'll definitely take a point out of this. So that's the way I'm looking at it. And when I analyze this second half, I'm just thinking, who was more likely to score? And I'm going to say it. I think it was Fulham. I think Fulham were more likely to score. And uh, it just wasn't meant to be to get that winning goal. It just wasn't meant to be. But I think over the course of the two matches with Wolves, I I think uh, I think you see two teams canceling each other out. And there are two draws out of this. I, I don't think that's by accident. Wolves are a very good side. They will not be relegated. They should be much higher up the table. There's no question about that. This is a quality team. So if you look at it in that context, it's a good point. It is definitely a good point. This is not a relegation level side. This is a top 10 side level. They just haven't been performing this season at that level. They have a very talented team. I thought they showed it at Craven Cottage. Okay. To end the show, I'm going to share my thoughts on who was man of the match. Okay, so if you're watching live, feel free to share your commentary on who was man of the match. And I'm just going to share some other comments from everyone. Let's see. This is from Showtime 53. The pressure in the second half was key. Also says Vinicius was unlikely. Two headers saved. Let's see. Also from Showtime 53. Menorah's class, Silva said he will not be starting in the near future due to fitness. Very interesting. I did not hear that. Obviously, I came on this live. So, man of the match, I'm assuming Lars is going with Menor. And I'm actually going to go with someone else. For man of the match, I'm actually going to go with Tim Ream. I think Tim Ream was man of the match for me. Again, vital to everything that Fulham do from the back. Controlling the play, very important. This is a dangerous side. I'm going to give Tim Ream man of the match. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I'm giving it to Tim Ream, but I understand why Fulham supporters would give it to Menor. Let's see what else we got. This is from Chris Mullings. Solomon changed the game, came on very bright and positive play. Billy C also shares top six and hopefully quarterfinal in, of the FA Cup. We'd have taken that in August. Absolutely. This is from Chris. He says, the Ottman of the match. Handful of key interventions. Very good. Chris Goodwin says, man of the match. Solomon came on and made a difference and deserved his goal. Absolutely. This is from Grant Forster. Ream, agree 100%. I think it's Ream. That's just my opinion. This is from Showtime 53. Agreed. Was the only one who played good from start to finish. Let's see. This is from my friend Wayne Walden. Hi, Russ. Just got from the game against Wolves, and my man of the match was Diop. Another one for Diop. So we got a couple for Diop and a couple for Ream. Demon Rose says, true, probably Ream. Always looked to open play with longer direct pass. That's my point. It's his cerebral part of the game that I think separates Tim Ream right now. I think... He's 35 years old. I'm going to say it right now. I hope he stays at Fulham for another season or maybe even two more. I think he can still play at a top level because of the way he reads the game. The leader that he is, he makes all the right decisions. Billy C also says, yeah, Reem was solid. Okay, very good. All right. Well, listen, that's going to do it for this quick episode, my initial reaction. To Fulham's 1 1 draw against Wolverhampton Wanderers at Craven Cottage. We will have a full post match show. I've already been told that the Fulham Shadow will be joining me, Emilio Danello, on this post match show on Saturday, and I might have another co host or two. So I'm looking forward to it, but I wanted to do a quick show, give you some content, share my views on what I think was a well deserved point for Fulham against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Cottage Talk. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other Fulham supporters find us. 
Well, that's going to do it for this episode. My name is Russ Goldman. Thank you, all, as always, for watching and listening to Cottage Talk, now part of the TalkSport Fan Network. <laughs>